Today, we're going to look at a web development productivity trick using overrides and Google Chrome DevTools. Have you ever worked on a website where build times are really slow or the project is really difficult to run locally? Maybe it's a really old website that you inherited from a client and there's no documentation or no real way to run it. These kinds of websites can be really tricky to work on. Chrome DevTools has a way to stub a website's files locally so that you can create your own local forked copy and the browser will use that instead. This is a workflow technique that I've been using recently on a really tricky kind of enterprise level project, and it's a tip I want to share with you today. Let's get started by popping over to Chrome. So here I am in Google Chrome. I put together this little landing page for our game dev community, uh, but also for this video. And as you can see, it's just a really simple landing page, just HTML, there's some CSS, and it's hosted on gamedevshift.com. There's also a little bit of JavaScript happening, but it's really nothing critical to the page. Obviously, this page doesn't really need any JavaScript, uh, but it's really just for the video's purpose. So for the sake of this video, let's pretend that gamedevshift.com is maybe in an environment that I can't easily uh, do a local setup on. Maybe I don't have access to the files, uh, and maybe the deployment cycle takes a really long time, and so it, it takes a while to kind of iterate on changes. Um, how can I work around those circumstances? And by the way, that might sound ridiculous for kind of a simple site like this, but it does come up in the real world all the time, especially in enterprise websites. Chrome DevTools has this sneaky but really handy feature within the Sources panel here called Overrides. So if you click Sources, uh, you may need to spindle this a little bit wider to see it, but there's a tab called Overrides. And under there, there's this plus that says Select Folder for Overrides. So I'm going to click this option here. And it's going to ask me to choose a directory on my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new folder. This can be called uh, Chrome Overrides. It really doesn't matter what you call it. And then make sure that's selected, and we'll say Select. Now Chrome will pop up with the security message, and it's asking if we want to give Chrome access to write files to our computer. The idea is that Chrome is going to take files that it downloads from the website and sort of copy them and put them in this directory that we just created and use those files instead of what we retrieved from the website. And so, you know, it's writing files to our computer. It needs access to do that. So I'm going to say allow. And now you can see our directory that we created is showing up down here. So now that we have our override folder enabled and created, make sure this checkbox for the feature is enabled, by the way, uh, we can actually start editing files that we received from the website. So I'm going to go to the network tab and make sure all is selected and just reload it. And here you'll get a list of all of the files that were downloaded. Again, a real production website will have way more than this, probably. Uh, this is a very simple website. But if I just look at the document, which is going to be the first one, and usually the best way to verify that is just filtering down to doc, um, gamedevshift.com. If I click it, you can see the HTML source of the actual document. Now, if I come over to the actual file name and right click it, this bottom option will say save for overrides. And in fact, from here on out, as long as that overrides feature in the sources panel is checked, you can right click on almost any file name that you see in the dev tools and you're gonna have the save for overrides option. So I'm gonna click this and you can see it's created a subdirectory within our Chrome overrides folder. And this matches the file path that we got from the actual website. And now you'll see our index.html file is open in this sources text editor, and it's got this little purple icon here. This purple icon here means that Chrome is overriding whatever it found on the real website with our own local copy. And so in here, I can come down and just start editing it. So say I want a second paragraph. I'll grab this paragraph tag and right above it, um, make another one. This paragraph should come first. And if I hit Command S to save it, Chrome will actually save this index.html override on my local machine. And so when I reload the page, it's going to use this new page source instead of what's actually live on this website. So if I want to iterate on the HTML structure or content of this website, I can actually just do it right here instead of um, you know saving it locally and then getting it live on the website and testing it that way. This feedback loop can be much, much faster. And you know, often you can achieve this by going to the Elements tab and sort of just riffing on the live DOM right here. And that, that's really cool too, it, it works really well. But the thing is, it will get blown away as soon as you reload the page. And furthermore, we're only kind of affecting things after the real page is loaded. If you wanna to try to test out some tweaks in the actual page document, the very first thing that the browser receives, maybe for like core vitals performance or um, you know anything that the page needs to then build itself, it can be really nice to just work with the like a mocked page source directly like this. 
And so, for example, you can see on line seven that uh, a font is being loaded in from Google Fonts. What if we just wanted to kind of test the performance difference if we removed it from the head and maybe put it at the bottom of the page? Well, now I can reload the page and actually get a real live test of what that's like and maybe how it affects my loading performance. But it's not just HTML that you can edit. Uh, you can edit really anything that the browser loads in. And so see here on lines, now on line seven, we have a main.css file. If I hit command P on Mac, I open up a fuzzy search. And so I can just type in main.css and it's gonna find game shift. If, here's our uh, style sheet, hit enter. And now um, I'm not overriding it yet. So this is the copy that we get from the server. But again, if I right click, save for overrides, now I have a local copy that the browser is going to use instead. I can uh, riff on the CSS this way. So say I don't want this background gradient. Say I want it to be um, background red. Ugh, yeah, this is better. Just maybe not purple. There we go. Now I can save and load and just kind of play with these styles in real time. And then when I have the styles where I want them for real, I can then backfill them into the repo. And you know, often when you're dealing with production CSS, it's probably going to be minified, at least on most, you know, for performance, most sites, you want to minify your CSS. Uh, what you can do is open up that file and then in Chrome, hit this bottom little button here, uh, the little brackets, and you can do that. And then Chrome will auto format the file for you, and then you can save it. So if you're dealing with minified style sheet, you can unminify it this way, save it, and then edit it and kind of make the moves you want to make again before getting it back into the real repo. And finally, let's see one last example where I mentioned at the top that this index file does include some JavaScript. It's index.js. So the way I'll find it is going to by the network tab, filtering to JS, and then it's already here from the, the other load. But if I just reload, we'll get all these back. Index.js, you can see it's really not doing much. It's just here for demo purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and right click it and save for overrides. And now I have a local copy here that I can edit on the fly. And so I'll just make some quick edits for fun here. So like const A is one, const B is two, const C is maybe A plus B. Uh, and then I'll set a timeout. And after a little bit of time, maybe, I don't know, um, 300 milliseconds, we'll do an alert box. And now I've hit save here. When I reload the page, it should use my local override JavaScript instead of what it found from the server, which will change the behavior. So I'll reload. And you can see after a little bit, I get this pop-up. And it's cool too, because I can even uh, debug in here. So if I go in and put a breakpoint here and then reload the page, now Chrome will stop here and I can just sort of step through my code uh, to make sure it's working properly. Okay, and that about wraps up the demonstration here. As you can see, it's really quick and easy to just override these files that are coming in and then make quick iterations. There are a few gotchas, and the gotchas are, like I mentioned before, um, of course, these edits we're making only live on our computer right now. So if you're working in a code repository or something, you're gonna have to like manually bring these back into the editor. And that can, I mean, that's a bummer, but sometimes again, if you don't have a good local setup, uh, it can be faster to work this way. Another thing you gotta remember to do is turn off local overrides. Sometimes it can be easy to forget that you have them running. So to turn them off, if you just uncheck the feature here, enable local overrides, and then reload the page, you're gonna get the actual content from the real server again. Uh, it's good to remember to do that. <laughs> Sometimes you can have stale files that you were working on a while back, and then um, you forget that they're turned on, and it's caused me a little bit of a headache before. And also one quick last gotcha here is that sometimes uh, the UI here can be a little bit buggy. And so say I want to get rid of the files that I've created, I can like right click them and say delete. Sometimes it doesn't actually delete. Uh, it looks like this time it did, but uh, I found it's a little bit more robust to actually go into your local computer and delete the files manually, even though this one seemed to cooperate. So that's the trick. I hope maybe you can find or think of a way to integrate this into your own workflow if you have a project that warrants this kind of thing. Again, most modern projects usually come with a really great local way to work, and so it's often not necessary. But sometimes the real world happens and you have to work around things. And so I found Chrome overrides to be a really good solution for that. If you got some value out of this video, I really appreciate it when you hit the thumbs up button. There's a lot more JavaScript and game dev content right here on this channel. So if you're into that kind of thing, please subscribe. There's a ton more on the way. And if you're working on a cool project or game that you want to tell people about, you should join our Discord. It's that whole website we've been working on throughout this whole video. There's a link in the description below to join. Hope to see you there. That's all for this one. Thanks so much, everybody. Catch you next time.